So uh, as Mike says, I'm a solutions architect at AWS. Um, I work with customers ranging from early, early stage startups uh, all right the way up to kind of brand name enterprises. Uh, I'm a generalist solutions architect on the platform. Um, so I work with all 50 plus services. Um, in practice, uh, that sometimes makes me a, a proxy for the documentation, but it also means that I'm a great person for uh, picking the right building blocks for whatever you're looking to build. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about, uh, in particular, two of those building blocks. Um, so uh, Lambda and Kinesis. Um, while people are filing in at the back, uh, and just so that I can make your time as, as useful as possible for you, can I get kind of uh, by a show of hands, firstly, who is running something on AWS at the moment? OK, amazing. <laughs> and of that crowd, who is currently uh, using Lambda or Kinesis? OK, um, cool. Well, that means I can brush over some of the uh, what is Lambda and what is Kinesis slides. Uh, for everyone else in the room, I, I will still go through those, um, but uh, we'll save a bit more time then for, for the demo. Um, so getting going then, uh, what am I going to be talking about today? Uh, so first and foremost, why serverless? Uh, why are we interested in it? Uh, hopefully today you've had a few answers to that, uh, and hopefully they will be incoherent. Um, but we'll take a quick look at, at why AWS is interested in serverless and, and, and what um, our, our approach is to it. Uh, and then how can we use AWS serverless technologies to build real-time data processing applications? Um, so first and foremost, why are we interested in, in serverless? Well, really, when AWS started way back in, in 2006, uh, we had core service offerings uh, like EC2 and S3 for doing your, your compute and your storage needs. Um, and since then, we've moved progressively up this stack with managed services. Um, so if you consider EC2, you're essentially letting us take care of the heavy lifting associated with moving servers around and installing physical kit. Uh, if you use a service like RDS, our relational database service, we're also taking care of the operating system and the major dependency, the, the database engine on top of that. And so depending on which services you pick up, you move kind of higher up this, this, this um, uh, management stack. Uh, and essentially, you're letting us take care of more of the undifferentiated heavy lifting. Uh, most companies don't distinguish themselves on running databases very well, um, but almost all companies use a database somewhere. And so by letting us do the bit that isn't adding value or direct value to your customers, um, you can concentrate on the bit that does differentiate you. Ultimately, that's your code, right? Um, usually sitting between major dependencies and your code is some kind of framework, um, some sort of bit of scaffolding that you use to get your code in a place that's useful for end users. Um, and what Lambda gives you is just the very top. You tell us what function you want to run, uh, what event triggers that function, whether that's a, an API endpoint or an object being uploaded to S3. Uh, and all you've added is just the code, the, the, the bit that distinguishes your use case from all others, and that gives direct value back to your end users. And so really, that's, that's the core tenant of, of serverless. We want uh, to enable you guys to spend the majority of your time giving value back to your end users. Um, and so we have a, a couple of tenants. Um, this is our <laughs> serverless compute manifesto um, and, and really sets down what we think of, of serverless. Um, so we want functions to be the unit of deployment, uh, not machines or, or, or containers. Um, we want permanent storage to be elsewhere. Um, so Lambda functions are, are stateless. Um, and we can talk a little bit about what you do with the state and, and what services we have to help with that. Um, we want to be able to scale with each request. So rather than having to add virtual machines and wait for them to spin up, we want Lambda functions to be immediately available and to scale with the number of people asking for those functions. Um, we don't want to pay for idle. Um, so the, the lowest uh, kind of unit of compute in Lambda is 100 milliseconds. Um, that's, yeah, <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty fine grained um, for most use cases. Um, and so we aren't paying for idle. We aren't paying for servers to sit around polling queues or waiting to execute cron jobs. Um, we just execute the function when we need to execute it. Um, and we want it to be implicitly fault tolerant because services, uh, services um, should run everywhere. Um, so the idea here is that for each request, you get a new instance of a Lambda function. Um, and, and so uh, implicitly, there's no single point of failure. If an individual request fails because uh, the, the requester has mangled it or the, the payload is, is um, kind of badly formed, that doesn't impact the rest of the system. Other Lambda functions executed with correct payloads will still be executed. Um, we want you to be able to bring your own code. So as I said, the bit that's adding value to end users is just the code that you're writing to support uh, their use case or their application. Um, so by just bringing your own code, you're that much more productive. Um, 
And finally, metrics and logging are a universal right. Uh, commonly seen as an afterthought with traditional application stacks. Uh, in Lambda, uh, logging and monitoring is, is baked in. Um, so yeah, and we'll see that uh, a little bit later as we explore uh, the management console. So moving on to the, the topic of the day then, real-time data processing. Um, so there's a couple of approaches to this, and, and again, Lambda can help us with both. Uh, the one we're really interested in today is stream processing, and, and that's why we've, we've chosen to go with uh, Kinesis Streams uh, in particular. Um, but there's, there's two general workloads to this, depending on how real-time your, your application needs to be. Uh, in general, your analytics flow moves from generate to store to analyze to share. Uh, usually share is live dashboards or reports at the other end that your users are exposed to. Um, and you want to reduce the time from the event happening to actually getting insight or, or showing a user that something happened. Um, so there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, you may choose to persist your events immediately and then analyze and share uh, in an asynchronous fashion. Um, so that might be using MapReduce frameworks uh, on EMR um, or uh, asynchronous um, uploads from S3. So S3 event triggers a Lambda function that does uh, kind of micro-batching or, or batch processing of those events. Um, in the other sense, we want to be able to process those events as they happen and as they arrive in as close to real time as, as we can handle. Um, and again, we'll see with Kinesis that uh, you can get down to uh, sort of hundreds of, of milliseconds um, from generation to uh, consumption and, and delivery. So how are Lambda and Kinesis going to help us build this real-time processing flow? Um, so as I mentioned right at the start, we're only taking two building blocks um, out of the 50-plus that we have to play with. Uh, we're going to be using Kinesis, um, where we will push event data to, um, very imaginative event data I'll, I'll show you later, uh, and then Lambda to consume those. And, and really what I'm trying to, to, to show you is how easy it is to start consuming real-time events um, on AWS with Kinesis and Lambda. Uh, obviously, this isn't the entire story. Um, if I had a, a longer workshop-style slot, um, we could go from start to finish all the way through to, to visualization, uh, either using our Elasticsearch service, Combiner. Um, but today, um, we're just going to concentrate on how easy is it to create a stream, push events to it, and uh, consume those in Lambda. Uh, so as promised, we have our Lambda overview. Um, hopefully everybody's familiar with Lambda. It's been mentioned a, a couple of times today, uh, at least, already. Um, but for those who aren't familiar, uh, Lambda is uh, a function as a service. Um, so you determine just the code you want to run in Python, Node, or, or Java, um, and uh, a trigger for that function. Uh, that can be uh, direct invocation using CLI, um, or the uh, APIs directly. Uh, that could be an AWS service. Um, I've mentioned S3 a couple of times. Um, so when you upload objects or, or change objects in S3, that can generate events uh, that can trigger Lambda functions. Um, could be third-party triggers. Um, interesting one here is uh, Alexa. I don't know if anybody's uh, had a play with Alexa, but um, the sort of default <laughs> option for handling voice commands um, on uh, Amazon Alexa is, is, is Lambda. Um, and there's a, a ton more places you can trigger these functions from. Um, and we make it very easy for you to perform data-driven auditing and analysis and notification based on those, those invocations. And the core benefits really are no infrastructure to manage. So right at the beginning, uh, with our, our sort of triangle of work, um, we, we, we want somebody else to be managing the undifferentiated heavy lifting, meaning that we don't want to be managing virtual machines or containers. Uh, and really, that's what Lambda is delivering. Uh, it gives us high performance at any scale. Um, there are some uh, default limits applied to Lambda functions, um, but all of those are raisable. It's, it's essentially just a, um, uh, a catch to ensure customers who are building things like cascading Lambda functions um, don't get exponential errors. <laughs> um, it's really just a safety net. Um, in practice, there are no practical limits, um, and we want it to be bring your own code. Cool. Uh, so moving quickly on then to Kinesis. Uh, given that a uh, fair few people in the room are using Kinesis, uh, maybe this is just an opportunity to update you on the, the Kinesis suite. Um, so the original Kinesis product is uh, Kinesis Streams, um, where you create a stream, you monitor um, 
the performance of your stream, you scale it using shards. Um, Kinesis Streams uh, provides you an endpoint to push events to, uh, and then uh, a mechanism for multiple consumers to read those events as they arrive and, and do things with them, persist them to S3 or update dashboards or send SNS notifications. Um, Recently, we announced uh, Kinesis Firehose. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Firehose, it's the uh, optimized common case. Uh, we had a ton of customers asking us um, that they just wanted a, a, a large endpoint to be pushing events to uh, and a single destination for those events to go to. Uh, so we want to collect clickstream data or machine data and dump it directly into S3 or into Redshift for, for BI and analytics. We don't want to have to bother with writing our own consumers um, and uh, the customization that that, that includes. Um, so Firehose allows you to easily consume large volumes of data with minimal effort. Uh, AWS is responsible for scaling the stream and delivering the messages. Uh, you get to determine how you would like to batch, so whether you're batching on time or, or by size and megabytes, um, and that's really all that you're, you're determining. Um, and then finally, Kinesis Analytics. Uh, so again, relatively recent. Uh, Kinesis Analytics allows you to write SQL queries that are executed for all periods of time on the stream. Uh, so that's as new events uh, arrive, uh, the SQL query is evaluated and pushed onto a, a new stream. So uh, Kinesis Analytics is, is stream in, stream out. And the use case there really is for carving up your Kinesis streams. Um, so uh, imagine a use case where you're consuming uh, IoT event data. Uh, some of those events might be benign, just updates or, or, or status updates. Some of them might be failures or maintenance tasks. Uh, using Kinesis anal uh, Analytics, you would be able to select those specific events and funnel them off to a particular stream to be processed. Uh, when, you when you start combining um, Kinesis Streams, Kinesis Analytics, and Firehose, you can see that some events you may just want to persist for posterity. So that might be kind of uh, uh, information level uh, events. You would want to select all of those and just put them into an S3 bucket. Uh, error states, you would probably want to have something like Lambda consuming from to, to actually respond to. Um, and so Kinesis Analytics provides you a, a great platform for um, sort of selecting events. It also allows you to do other SQL actions, uh, like aggregations and summing. Um, so uh, very, very worth looking into, particularly if you're already using Kinesis and, and hadn't come across uh, Firehose and, and Analytics. Uh, again, the benefits of Kinesis. Um, so AWS is responsible for the availability and the durability of your, uh, your streams. Uh, it's incredibly scalable. Uh, the scaling action for streams in particular is number of shards. And again, there's no practical limit to the number of shards. Um, and uh, it's entirely managed by us. Cool. Um, so how do we combine these two together to get something useful? Um, the idea here is that you map a Kinesis stream to a one or more Lambda functions. Uh, we talk a little bit about why you might have many uh, in a second, um, but the idea is that um, for each shard in your Kinesis stream, you have a, a, a one or more Lambda functions associated. For events arriving on the stream, uh, Lambda is invoked to deal with those events. Uh, and again, we can talk a little bit about uh, whether that's one message or, or in reality, it's, it's actually micro batches um, and uh, the considerations therein. Um, but essentially, it means that you, you no longer have virtual machines with the uh, Kinesis client library sitting around waiting for events to happen. Um, you only have uh, invocations when uh, events arrive. What does a, uh, a particular invocation look like, or what, what record is your Lambda function receiving? Um, so for people who have built Lambda functions, um, hopefully this, this, this makes a little bit of sense. Um, when your Lambda function is invoked, you receive a collection of records as they arrived on the stream. Um, so you aren't getting a single Lambda function per record. Um, you are getting batches. And again, we can determine uh, the batch size. Uh, so when we go through and, and run the demo, uh, that, that is configurable. Um, and so you receive a, a list of records that you can then process in your Lambda function um, and, and do with what you would. Uh, this happens synchronously. Um, so we'll go through uh, in, in a little while uh, how we are doing this under the hood. You'll get a bit of a sneak peek into, into how Lambda is built. Um, but ultimately, Lambda is invoked as a synchronous request response type, uh, honoring the at least once semantics. Um, and each shard blocks in order synchronous invocation. Uh, so what that's saying is for, for each shard, you get a, uh, an invocation of Lambda that waits for completion uh, before the next one starts. And that's how you can do in-order processing um, with uh, Lambda and Kinesis. 
And so this is um, a kind of a diagra diagrammatical representation of, of what we were talking about earlier. This idea that we can have multiple functions mapped to one stream. So if you write a general purpose Lambda function for persisting to S3, that can be mapped to multiple Kinesis streams. Um, we can map multiple streams to one Lambda function. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that way around. So that is having multiple Lambda functions on a single stream uh, doing different tasks. So you would have one Lambda function, in this case, persisting to S3, another Lambda function associated with the same stream, either pushing to Dynamo or updating CloudWatch. Uh, this can be doing uh, any number of things. These are just examples. Uh, other examples include uh, calling the machine learning service. Uh, if you'd built a model in Amazon ML and you wanted to categorize events as they arrived, examples being fraudulent or not fraudulent or worth investigating and not worth investigating, again, uh, use Lambda or, or have a particular Lambda function to call that external endpoint. Uh, other ones, I mean, these endpoints can, can be anything that's internet accessible. Um, so if you have your own API endpoints or third-party API endpoints that you integrate with, um, again, um, having Lambda functions to do that um, will, uh, will, will, will help you out. So I'm going to move quickly on to actually building this. Um, so I have done a little bit of Blue Peter, kind of hedging bets on, on Wi-Fi. So I have got one set up already. Um, but uh, I'm actually going to uh, go through and uh, build it from scratch with you. Um, so has everybody seen the management console? Awesome. <laughs> it, it changes on an almost daily basis. Um, in terms of uh, adding features and functionality. So if you've been using the platform for a while and you haven't seen it recently, um, hopefully it's, uh, it's, it's grown a little bit. Um, so we're going to start off with Kinesis. And we're going to go straight in and create our Kinesis stream. Thankfully, Wi-Fi is playing well. So you can see the one I created previously, um, but we're going to go ahead and create a new one. Give it a name. Uh, give it a pair of shards, and go ahead and create it. And let's see, give it a couple of moments. Perfect. I wonder how well this is going to behave. If I'm in presentation mode, can I jump between windows? Nope, okay, we'll have that up in the background. Cool. So after we've created our stream, we're going to go ahead and, and create a Lambda function. Um, so again, similar idea. I'll go straight back to the Lambda console. Uh, again, you can see I've created one previously, and, and I have a few others in my account. Um, to make this as easy as possible, uh, I'm going to choose a blueprint. Um, so this is a great, great starting point um, for your first Lambda functions. Um, I went ahead and created the, the Python blueprint because uh, I, it takes me a little bit longer when I'm staring at Java. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and choose the Kinesis stream I just created as the source. Um, we talked a little bit about the, the batch size. Um, so uh, we aren't receiving individual events into Lambda. We are getting um, a list of record sets. Uh, and this is where we determine our batch size. Uh, this is a maximum. So uh, if uh, fewer events uh, arrive uh, on your stream, um, the uh, Lambda polar is not going to wait for this full batch size. Um, it will invoke. Um, with fewer if, if necessary. Uh, this is a maximum. Um, so if you didn't want to receive more than 100, um, particularly if you are doing some heavier processing within that, if you know that 100 extends your, your Lambda times longer than you, you would like, um, then using smaller batches uh, will, will help you there. Uh, we then choose the, the starting position. Um, so you have a couple of options here. Uh, start with the latest record or start on the trim horizon. Uh, trim Horizon is the oldest available record. Uh, if you consider Lambda is a, a sort of sliding window of events, uh, default persistence is 24 hours, uh, but you can extend that up to seven days. With Trim Horizon, we want to start with the oldest message that's still within our, our, our window um, persisted on Lambda. Um, and we'll go ahead and use uh, Trim Horizon uh, here. Cool. Um, so for those of you familiar with Python, hopefully you, you can see very uh, quickly what this is doing. Uh, for those of you less familiar, um, all we're doing here is receiving the record. Uh, Kinesis data is Base64 encoded, so uh, we go ahead and decode that um, and then immediately print. Uh, and all we're 
returning is uh, the dec decoded payload uh, string and then whatever we found in the payload. Um, it's entirely up to you to determine what you would like that payload to be. Um, so uh, a lot of my customers are using JSON objects because they're very easy to uh, convert into Pythons in, in, in Java or, or Python. Um, but really, you can put anything you like in the payload. Um, and so yeah, go through. Uh, rather than choosing an existing role, uh, we're going to create a new one. Um, so this is the. IAM role that the Lambda function is using to execute. Uh, so this is your opportunity to provide permissions for the services you want to be calling from Lambda. Uh, in AWS terms, this is super easy. Uh, we'll go through. Uh, and we have the ability to uh, select some, some predetermined policies. Um, if I had an existing role in my account that I wanted to use, I could select that. Um, but this is ultimately giving you uh, giving your Lambda function permission to call other AWS services. So if I wanted to be pushing information into S3, uh, or if I wanted to, to be uh, connecting to uh, SQS or SNS, uh, this is where I would provide permissions. And crucially, I only want to be providing permissions for those services and actions. Um, so you can really lock down access to your Lambda functions to the specific services you want to use. Uh, and actually, if you are familiar with IAM and writing policy documents, you can limit it down to individual resources. Uh, if you only wanted Lambda to be able to access a specific bucket or a prefix within a bucket, um, you're able to determine that in, in IAM privileges. Um, and that level of granularity is available for, for all services. Um, I'm actually not going to add anything because all my function is doing is sort of printing. Um, so in line with best practice, I'm giving it least privileges, which is nothing. <laughs> um, I'm going to extend the timeout um, just in case. Um, and uh, yeah, moving on. Oh. Giving my Lambda function a name. Great. Uh, and that really is the quickest way to uh, create a Lambda function. Uh, where you saw in the code, uh, I can change that print function into anything I'd like to do. Um, with Lambda, and particularly with Python um, in, in particular, uh, Boto and the AWS CLI are both included in the container. Uh, so again, um, for, for me to be accessing external services, um, I could really write a couple of lines of, of Boto in there to forward the message on to SQS or SNS or, or any other logic that I'd um, I'd be interested in, in adding. Great. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is start pushing to that stream. Um, so uh, this is just a very short bash script um, using the AWS CLI. Um, change the stream name to the one we just created and get it going. Well. Before I get it going, so all we're specifying here is the data. So that's the payload of the event. Um, so in this case, we're just pushing tweet tweet as a string. Uh, as I said, this could be a JSON object. It could be XML or, or, or a standard log formats. Uh, it's entirely up to you to determine what your message looks like. Um, and we're specifying a partition key. Um, so choosing partition keys is uh, a, an important consideration when you are dealing with Kinesis streams. Uh, the idea here is that. Um, Messages with the same partition key will end up on the same stream. Uh, and this is how you can determine if you want your messages to be processed in order um, that they arrive on the same stream to be consumed from. Um, there's a ton of use cases where the partition key just isn't useful. If your messages don't have any meaning in, in strings, they don't need to be processed in line, uh, then you can just use a, a sort of random hex function in this place, um, and events will be consumed uh, or spread across all shards. Uh, if we were looking at something like uh, an IoT device, we wanted all events for a particular device to arrive on the same stream, then we can use the device ID as the partition key. Uh, if I was interested in user sessions, I was collecting clickstream data. Again, session ideas is, is a pretty useful one to have there. Uh, importantly, we want to have more partition keys than um, shards um, in our Kinesis stream. Uh, and the idea is that um, uh, when, we, when we shard um, our stream, those partition keys can move around. Um, this is handled for you when you're using Lambda um, by, by us. Uh, if you're using Kinesis Streams uh, directly with the Kinesis client library, again, the client library handles the, the sharding uh, gracefully. So it knows uh, at what point messages run out on the uh, old stream uh, or, or the old shard in the stream and at which point to pick up um, the, the new ones. So if we get going. 
Great. I think I might actually create another tab, and I think Wi-Fi is going to be our um, our constraint here. So I'll actually push two lots from two different places. Um, so if I head back. What's actually happening here and, and what we're getting returned um, from our request to push a new message onto the stream is um, a shard ID. Uh, so remember I created two shards. Because I'm using the same partition key for this, this particular while loop, uh, they're all ending up on the same shard. Um, so we'll let that run for a little while and head over to my individual functions, take a look at uh, three minutes ago, smashing. And if I have a look at monitoring, so we can see immediately that my function has been called. In fact, it's been uh, called uh, 30 times since the last time I refreshed, 35 times, uh, and we should see again, yeah, 45. So in real time, Lambda is receiving these events. Uh, we can head through to CloudWatch logs to see what uh, Lambda is, is actually experiencing in the logs. Um, so if we have a look at the log stream with the latest uh, and expand it to show all of the text. Um, the log entries we're seeing here is a uh, specific request ID, and then all of the um, individual messages for that request ID. Um, so you can see we're getting uh, various batch sizes. Um, I put 100 as my maximum, but the events were, were arriving in, in less than. Um, what's actually happening here, and the reason why we're seeing such small batch sizes is uh, despite the fact that I'm running two versions of my uh, AWS CLI while loop, uh, the Wi-Fi in here isn't quick enough to fill the stream. <laughs> um, so in, in real terms, if you had hundreds of thousands of customers all uh, going into your shards, you, you might um, start approaching the uh, one megabyte, megabit per second uh, input limit and the two megabit per second out the other end. Um, in, in real terms, um, I have plenty of customers who are using a single shard um, because their events aren't that frequent. Um, and as I said, if you do exceed that, uh, you can always add shards to your stream uh, to cope with that extra, uh, extra load. Um, the last thing we might be interested to go and see is uh, what is happening on our Kinesis stream. Uh, so again, if we head over recent services and have a look at streams, Oh, no, not analytics. OK. Kinesis, streams, and pick the live stream. Uh, again, uh, in a second, uh, all of our events will come up here. Um, so when I created my stream, I specified uh, the uh, default um, time in, in CloudWatch. So uh, I'll get five minute slices of, of metrics. Uh, this can be extended. So if you're interested in seeing more granularity or, or uh, more dimensions, um, again, uh, you're able to add those on. Cool. Um, so at this point, we have a Kinesis stream that is practically un. Uh, infinitely scalable. Uh, we have Lambda functions that are receiving those events and printing them out um, into the console that we can view directly in CloudWatch logs. That's taken all of about five minutes. Um, so really, it demonstrates the, the speed at which you can develop using these tool sets um, and really how quickly you can get up and running consuming real-time data uh, today. Cool. So uh, this just sort of continues through what we did. Uh, so just to recap, uh, we chose our batch size. Um, it's not equivalent to how many um, events or records Lambda will poll. Um, we are polling every 250 milliseconds, and we'll give you whatever we found in that time period. Uh, we determined the start position. So rather than processing the newest message, we decided to process the oldest available. Uh, so we chose our, our trim horizon. Um, and as I promised, what we are doing underneath the hood is polling Kinesis every 250 milliseconds uh, to find new events on your behalf, and then synchronously triggering uh, one or more Lambda functions associated with that stream. Um, and so uh, we are using a flavor of the Kinesis client library to do this. Um, and, and this is, again, the undifferentiated heavy lifting we are uh, doing on your behalf um, to make it as easy as possible to just write the function you need to run when you're using uh, Kinesis. As I mentioned, Lambda is blocking for each individual shard. Uh, so we're waiting for the previous Lambda execution to finish before we trigger a, a new one. Uh, that's so that you can process messages in order. Um, 
And increasing the number of shards with even distribution allows increased concurrency. So uh, back to our example, if we had an internet of things with lots of things generating lots of events, um, using the thing ID as the partition and then sharding allows us to have new instances of our Lambda functions consuming from those shards and allows us to scale horizontally. Uh, and then using the batch size may impact uh, how long the Lambda function takes. Um, and so it's up to you guys to determine how many, what is your maximum batch size? What is the most uh, number of records you'd like to receive? Uh, if you're doing uh, relatively long procedures on each record, then you might choose to, to retrieve fewer at a time. Um, otherwise, um, uh, 100 is a very good starting point. Great, uh, so the maximum theoretical throughput of Kinesis on its own is the number of shards times uh, two megabytes per second. Um, the effective theoretical throughput when we're using Lambda is the number of shards times by the batch size divided by the function, function's duration. Um, so this is uh, super important uh, as it is different from the normal Kinesis streams use case. Um, so uh, it, it's worth taking a note of. I see a few people are, are, are taking photos. Uh, uh, yep. Um, just determining that uh, function length, and again, we saw in the uh, CloudWatch console how long our, our Lambda functions were taking to execute. Using that to tune your consumption of events uh, will make a big difference to, uh, to, to your overall application. Great. So a few other uh, key aspects then, um, just to, uh, to, to finish this up. Uh, we have retry execution failures until the record has expired. Uh, we retry with exponential back off up to 60 seconds. Um, throttles and error will impact the, direct, the, the duration of your Lambda functions directly. Um, so again, if you do see that some functions are taking longer than others, um, it may be due to, to throttling. Um, and again, at that point, you might look to uh, reduce your batch size um, and we had a look through monitoring, and actually, I think at this point, we can go back to CloudWatch and take a look. Um, so have a look at the events as they're coming through to Kinesis. There we go. And then if I refresh, fantastic. So we've got a five-minute slot where we can see Kinesis is receiving events. Uh, we kind of already knew this because we went through to the Lambda console, and we're actually getting events through, and they're printing out. Um, but it's Useful to see that Kinesis is also reporting, I, I'm seeing stuff. <laughs> cool. And then using the CloudWatch APIs, you're free to consume these metrics. Uh, there are uh, plugins for various analytics platforms. So again, if you want to uh, consume that information from CloudWatch and uh, overlay information with other services, um, you're entirely free to do so. Um, I find that using the, the default graphs in CloudWatch is actually a really good place to see very quickly um, how my Kinesis stream is, is performing. We looked at monitoring Lambda. Uh, so we saw the invocation count going up. Uh, we moved from uh, so 35 to 45 in, uh, in a matter of seconds. Uh, this is, hmm? yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, this is a great way to uh, identify if your Lambda function is, is, is actually running, is actually doing what it's meant to be doing. And then CloudWatch logs allows us to see uh, essentially the printout. Um, so in Python terms, all I was doing was printing out to the console, and those were turning up uh, in, my, in my logs. I think I'm uh, uh, approaching. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is that my, my five-minute pull? <laughs> um, cool. So. Uh, Best practices here, create enough shards for parallel processing. Um, really, <coughs> shards are the way we scale our Kinesis streams. Uh, and if you are running multiple consumers, if you have a use case to have multiple Lambda functions matched to individual um, streams, then use Kinesis streams uh, and think about the way you're partitioning. Um, so choose your partition keys to distribute those records across multiple shards. Um, Monitor and address your Lambda functions uh, and errors. So again, use CloudWatch. If you do see error rates, if your Lambda functions are failing, uh, go into CloudWatch, go into CloudWatch logs to identify uh, what's going wrong. Um, as I said, the Lambda Polar will do exponential back off. So uh, if we aren't able to execute a function successfully, we will try again. Um, so if you are doing uh, anything kind of fancy uh, in terms of pulling configuration from Dynamo or from S3 in your Lambda function, and that sort of particular bit of code isn't working for you at that point in time. Um, monitor for your uh, failures and uh, hopefully fix them. Uh, and lastly, um, 
look at the limitations per shard. Um, so as I said, a lot of customers will start with a single shard because it gives you uh, a significant amount of throughput. Uh, if you do notice that you are starting to approach um, your, your uh, one megabyte per second input and two megabyte per second output, um, catch that in Kinesis, use CloudWatch alarms to alert, um, and start adding numbers of shards. Uh, there are a few open source frameworks for scaling Kinesis. Um, so again, consuming those notifications and actually doing something about it in line. Um, so take a look at those. Uh, if you aren't interested in multiple consumers, then consider using Firehose, uh, push to S3, um, and use Lambda uh, triggers off the back of that uh, to consume the flat file data that Firehose is generating for you and do micro-batching in, in that sense. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, log to CloudWatch logs. So pushing out to the console in, in Java terms or, or um, printing in, in Python terms uh, or push to SNS. Um, if you want specific notifications um, to, uh, to, to alert end users or to send emails or to send SMSs, um, then, uh, yeah, use SMS directly from Lambda. Cool. Um, so really what I'd like you guys to do next is go ahead and do what I just did. Create your streams if you haven't already. Play with Kinesis Analytics if, if you're using Kinesis streams already. Um, have a look at the developer guys. Have a look at uh, Lambda and Kinesis tutorial. Um, and yeah, enjoy it. Thank you very much, Ken. Yeah. So we managed to get all the way through a live code demonstration, and then it was probably okay. a cable on the floor that gave way in the end. So <laughs> ah. well done for that. Um, if there are, if you want to ask a question, we've probably got time for a couple of questions now. Yeah. Otherwise, of course, Amazon's got the booth out in the exhibition hall. Any questions? There's one at the back. Hang I think. On, I so. think. Oh. <laughs> uh, sorry, we'll, we'll grab you next. I think he's got the mic. So. Sorry, just quickly. So in this situation yeah. where you've got one message, one event type, what's the advantage of using Kinesis over just pushing to an SNS topic, which is triggering a lambda? So for, for that use case, uh, it's entirely up to, to you guys to decide which you would prefer. One of the benefits with Kinesis is that it is uh, persistent. So uh, I get the Kinesis SQS um, just as often as Kinesis SNS. Um, consider with um, Kinesis streams that every message is persisted for the period that you determine. Um, so it's, it's there on the stream to be consumed or to be reconsumed for a 24 hour up to, to seven day period. Um, so if whatever you're triggering, whatever's consuming from SNS or from SQS starts dropping messages on the floor, um, particularly with SQS if you're retrieving the message and then removing it from the queue, uh, you can't retrieve that. Um, so one of the major benefits with Kinesis and, and Kinesis Streams in particular is that it is persistent. If you do have a problem with uh, a Lambda function or, or any code that you provide it and it does start losing messages, uh, you have the ability to, to restart processing from the, from the trim horizon. Does that help? Cool. Uh, actually, I think the gentleman down the front. Um, just just to, to, to clarify again, um, we do have uh, four or five solutions architects out on our booth. So if you do have questions that relate to your specific use cases, come and look us up. We'd be happy to, happy to talk about them. Um, I think actually uh, we have a member of our uh, Lambda software development team in the house tonight. Um, she uh, just wanted me to clarify the 250 milliseconds is long polling. So if there's uh, messages available on the stream, uh, <coughs> In a, in a shorter time than 250 milliseconds, that will immediately be um, synchronously added through. Um, so it's a maximum 250 milliseconds, not we'll wait 250 milliseconds every time. Uh, just, just to be clear. <laughs> What's the likelihood that two messages with the same partition key will be processed by the same computing unit then? That I, I don't actually know. I think that's uh, maybe something to, to come to the booth and, and, and pick up with us. <laughs> okay, so uh, well, thank you very much. Um, if you please show your appreciation to Ken. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh